the book of Obadiah. And you would know that I would turn a one chapter book into probably a four night study. There's much in here. There's much. So Obadiah means servant of the Lord. Oh, if many Christians were like that. If all Christians were like that. You know, if all Christians did what they're supposed to do, you imagine how good this world would be, actually. Uh, the date questions, but usually from the 10th to the 15th uh, century B.C. Now, this book is remarkable because this book is against Edom. The Edomites are the children of Esau, the Jacob, Jacob, the brother of, I mean, yeah, Esau, the brother of Jacob. You remember, uh, Esau hated Jacob, proclaiming that he stole in the blessing, even though he sold his birthright. And there was another time, I believe, that when, when Jacob returned, Esau meets him, and he's happy to see him, and he's like, I'll help you, I'll send the team to get you. And Jacob's like, well, I'll meet you in Esau. I'll meet you in Edom. That's the Edom is the land of Esau. And Jacob never went to Edom. He completely avoided his brother. So what we have is the judgment upon Edom's arrogancy. We'll see that tonight. And we'll see America. We're going to see the day of the Lord. The Lord's wrath. The second advent. In this little book. Probably ignored. Probably, this book probably has never seen the day of light in some Bibles. No one's opened it, I'm saying. And then we're going to see Israel's repossession of the land. Israel's going to get that land back. Totally, fully. And they won't have a prime minister. They'll have the king of kings, the Lord of lords, the Lord Jesus Christ. So there, it, it's, it's a book that has 21 verses, one chapter. And it's divided into four sections. And we're going to do the four sections. The vision of Obadiah. So this is a vision. It's not a dream. It's a man, he's awake and he sees. Thus saith the Lord God concerning Edom. Yeah, and that's Esau. The land is called Edom also. We have heard a rumor from the Lord. I don't know if God's going to have a, a rumor, but we've heard a rumor from the Lord. We heard something about the Lord. From the Lord. An ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise ye. And let us rise up against her in battle. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. Now, listen, in the, in the hotbed of Middle East, you know they're all family. They're all angry at each other. And they're all angry against Israel. Now, Esau... Married into Ishmael. He married into the people of Cana. And there's a list of his, him and his duke. He will bring forth Elimelech. Elimelech is the man that came in the journeys of Israel behind Israel and started killing the, Jew, the Israelites. King Saul was given a charge to kill all the intellect, but, you know, he spared the best. That's Esau. 
Here we go. The pride, and this is what Esau is known for, their pride. So is America. The pride of thy heart has deceived thee. So what's one way for you to be deceived? A nation. America. You've got pride. I'm proud to be American. Made in the USA. We got the best government. We got the best country. No, you don't. Wait till Jesus Christ comes and sets up Israel. That would be the best, Christian. Our team's number one. Pride. Proud. Destroyed. Pride and proud and arrogancy are all a sin in the Bible. You never see God of any of his attributes involving pride or proud. He doesn't say to a Christian, I'm proud of you, my boy. Pastor will get it. I'm proud of my church. I'm proud of my son. I'm proud of my daughter. No, God says, well done. The moment you get into pride, you start the very root of pride. You're going to deceive. Wait, how do you get deceived? You think you're better than what you are. You think you deserve things. You know what God says about the lad that's in church age? We're rich. We're great. We have no need of nothing. That's pride. That's pride. Especially when God says you're deceived because you're, you're miserable, poor, and naked. We don't even see ourselves in this church age as we really are. We got the greatest pastor. We got the greatest church. You know any sins you're involved? I heard a preacher say today, people, you know, they're, they're just, because they enjoy being, hearing what they hear, even though it's wrong. Thou that dwells in the cliffs of the rocks, and Edom, where they are, is a place known for the rocks. Selah preaches there, and that's where we believe where the Jews are going to be hiding out, and the enemy forces, amongst the enemy forces of Edom. And if you ever can look up online, or they get the, I got the National Geographic uh, book about it in my bookshelf. If you can ever look at the the, the, the pictures of Sela Petra, this is a rock city that has been carved out amongst the rocks. And as always, when you look at Sela Petra, you always get that one bit. Here is this, this magnificent building. With columns and it's huge, and you, you think they built it that way? No, it's been carved out of a rock. And, and they got to the point, you know, say, "Hey, listen, we live in this rock city. We're protected. We're up high. We're going to see that." Selapitra has, in order to get in Selapitra, the nar the narrowest way of, of the way to get in Selapitra. It, there's a point where I am told that you can only fit one or two people as you're going down this way or street, whatever you want to call it, into the city. Well, listen, if you're going to attack Sela Petra, you can only allow one or two at a time. They're going to pick you up. And Ian's got to the point, who's going to hurt us? Who's going to touch us? And that's what America said. We got the greatest army. We got the greatest navy. We got the, yeah, how come we couldn't take care of Vietnam? How come we couldn't take care of Korea? How come we couldn't take care of Afghanistan? And we gone on with there and we killed the man over mass weapons. And when we killed him and checked everything out, we couldn't find no weapons of mass destruction. You know? Whose habitation is high. Again, they're, they're, they're like a mount, um, they're a rock mountain. I mean, you you would call their city, if you were to call their city anything, you would call it bedrock. Sound familiar? That saith in his heart, 
Okay? Who shall bring me down to the ground? That's what America thinks. Who's going to conquer us? Russia? Man, we stepped in there. We would kick Russia's butt. Oh, China is nothing for us. We just get a nuclear missile. Boom. We got the submarines and all that. I built the submarines. That's what I did for part of my life. Nuclear ballistic missiles. Everything's all electronic. We are in an age where they could get into electronics and give you a bug, give you a virus. And you know, I always say when I was working for the, I talked with my coworkers. If water ever got into the, the, today's modern submarine, it's gone because it's all electronic. Water, especially salt water, does not mix well with electronics. Now, I want to take you over to Isaiah 14. I want to show you the pride. Isaiah 14. There's another verse I got to look up. Let's look at Isaiah 14, 13 of all numbers. But look at verse 12. Isaiah 14, 12. How thou art fallen from heaven. And that's what we're going to be talking about, Edom. The fall of Edom. O Lucifer. Son of the morning, don't you? If your Bible has has the the, mor the morning star, you have the most wickedest Bible ever. That's more wicked than uh, Ante Vivay's uh, Satanic Bible, because only Jesus is the star of the morning Revelation. And I guarantee, if your if your pastor, your Sunday school teacher has a modern Bible, they're not going to quote this verse. If somebody's sitting in the audience as a King James Bible believing person who knows the Bible, they're not going to quote that verse with me sitting there. I'm mean, actually with somebody like me sitting there. They don't dare to. Listen, I've, I've heard I've heard verses quoted from other Bibles. And then how, oh, okay, here we go. And then all of a sudden, it runs to the King James, and then they go back to, ah. Okay. How they cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations. Did you just remember we saw nations? For thou hast said in thy heart, uh-oh, did, did we just read that? I will send into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, the angels. I will sit in a mount, high place, the country in the sides of the north. So, Edom has a very bad thing of pride. And they're like Satan. Lucifer before Satan. And I'm looking at the verse here. Job 41.34 Now Job 41 talks about Leviathan. Leviathan is not a hippopotamus. He's not a crocodile. Leviathan is Satan. And this verse, this chapter, has been messed with with the Bibles. This has been messed with the scholars. But look at the end of Job 41, 34, about the devil. I don't care if you got a Republican or Democrat president. He beholdeth all high things... You recognize that word? Hi. You put the red, white, and blue high up on the pole, and you put your hand to your heart, and yeah, you slur allegiance to that piece of cloth, you idolizer. And I, that many Baptists now hate me for saying that. That's idolization. You're not supposed to slur, uh, swear allegiance to a cloth. You swear, you swear, I keep swear, you swear allegiance to God. Now, 
I know you don't like what I said, and you're going to accuse me of being. That's, that's one of the good things that the Jehovah Witnesses have. Boy, did I just step in it. He is a king over all the children of pride. The ruler of the nation of America is not Republic, Democrat, or Independent. The ruler of this nation is Satan himself, because this nation is followed by pride. Obadiah. Nobody can defeat America. Now, you wait till America's cup gets full. I bet you Sodom was like that. So who shall bring me down to the ground? That's the words of Satan. Habitation up on high, that's Satan. Pride, that's Satan. Deceive, that's the work of Satan. And there's a lot of, uh, of men and women who are not supposed to be there, you Southern Baptist Council, Rick Warren. Women don't belong in that, that pulpit. That didn't cost you anything. But it, when people are being deceived, they are being deceived from the pulpit all over the world. That's not God. That's Satan. And if God has allowed it, that, that, that foul lying spirit that he sent, and he did send a lying spirit, and that lying spirit is Satan, that's only because that's what you want. That's what you merge yourself for. These people that, they, that you hear about, they get deceived. They fall into these scams and, and phony, whatever you want to call it. That's because in their heart, oh, I want to get rich, I want to get rich, I want to get rich. And you don't think about, if it don't make sense, there's a buck in it. Thou, though thou exalt thyself, as an eagle. Uh-oh. Well, that's not the American bald eagle. If you look online, after you look up Sail Petri, look online to Middle East Eagle. He looks like our hawk. Only bigger. But isn't it weird we're talking about a nation of pride? They are following after Lucifer. Lucifer had a good spot one time. Then he got prideful and he got wicked. He got sin and he fell. America was a Christian nation. Yes, she was. She got prideful. Then she fallen. And we got an eagle. As part of our national symbol. And according to the law, the eagle is an unclean animal. There was another nation exalted itself high and lofty. And we're going to change the whole world. We're going to set the world as our leadership. And that was the Nazis, Adolf Hitler, and his symbol was an eagle. We have in the Coast Guard, we have the sailing ship, the training soldier, called the, the, the eagle. And if you've seen the eagle, and I have, because, you know, New London, Connecticut, in front of that ship, you got that golden eagle ahead of that ship. And he got his feet, the talons. In his talons used to be a shield and symbol that held the swastika. 
Now, this is important because the eagle was property of Adolf Hitler. It was a war prize. It was a spoil of war. And as we're looking into Russia today, I keep hearing about these big fancy yachts. I said, ah, history's repeating itself. I think Babylon was also associated as an eagle. I can't firmly say that. Thou set thy nest among the stars. Stars, according to Revelation 1, and you think, well, off these stars, they're off their angels. Satan has one third of the band of angels in heaven that are his. The Bible says that you can entertain angels unaware. It didn't say the good angels. It didn't say the evil angels. I believe we have both walking around. Thence will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. And that's what God said about Lucifer. That's what God's going to do with America. If thieves came to thee, if robbers by night, now you say, what's the difference between a thief and a robber? A robber will use violence in his criminal act, being a criminal. If a gun is pulled, if somebody is slugged, knife, if a knife is used, or a bomb, or whatever it is, if there's a weapon or a call to violence, that's a robber. A thief is a quote-unquote peace. A thief will break into your house, not a robber, when you're not home. And be out of your house before you even know it. Now, if a thief is in your house stealing, and you come home and you catch him, and he grabs something to threaten you, he's now become a robber. Thou art cut off. That cut off in the Bible means for the Jew to be cut off means you don't go to Abraham's bosom. You go to hell. I don't care what you do. I don't care how many offerings you bring. I don't care what you try to do. If you are cut off in the nation of Israel as an Israelite, you were damned. To God's mercy, David should have been cut off. To God's mercy, Solomon should have been cut off. I should have been cut off. But Calvary and the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ saving my soul. I didn't say church. A lot of people want to bring you to church, but they don't want to bring you to Calvary. Would they not stolen until they had enough? They were the same. If the thief and the robber had an opportunity, they would take everything. Give me your money. And you give them all your money. Oh, that's a, give me that watch. Give me the ring. Give me the earring. What else you got on you? That's, uh, if the great gatherers came unto thee, <laughs> what a contrast. Would they have not left some grapes? Well, how about the barley in the book of Ruth? Ruth and, and the fellow people like her would go into the barley fields and what was missed they would gather. Boaz told us, you throw a little extra for her. And what the thing is, if these people came in to eat them, would they have not had opportunity to take everything they could? And yet, if they came in here and said, hey, we're going to grab it all, like Babylon did in Judah with the temple, 
Yeah, but there's going to be some some things left over. We still can find Edomites. Not very many. But they will be driven out. How are the things of Esau searched out? How are the things of America searched out? I'm waiting. I, I won't know. If nobody knew, but, but why? I'm waiting for two angels to come into America. You say, you believe it? I believe two angels came into Germany and said, wow. Look at all the Jews being slaughtered. And they report back to God. Yeah, God, everything you heard is true. I believe that with my heart. You don't mess with the Jews. Now, we're going to read about Esau, how he hated his brother. And when, when God told Esau, I mean, when God told Abraham, and Isaac blessed Jacob, when Isaac blessed Jacob, that I will bless them that bless you, and I will curse them that curse you, that goes on to Edom for a curse. One of the things that, that Esau did was when, when Babylon came in and attacked Judah and Jerusalem, when the Jews tried to escape, Edom caught Jews on the run and brought them to Babylon. They said, look what I found. I don't know if they were paid or not, but they would turn Israel over or Judah over. And when, when Jerusalem fell, Esau or Edom, hey, now that we can get the city, ha, 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 ha. Get my blessing that Jacob stole from us that you sold for some beans. Don't you believe, and I heard preachers, you know, the stolen blessing of Jacob. He didn't steal it. He sold it. what the Bible says. How the hidden things are sought up. God knows how many babies have been killed in America. I'm not talking about just abortion. How many babies have been killed because of drug? Babies born some serious drug defects. Now, I've seen pictures and videos, very short, you can't, of nurses holding them, those pathetic little babies. Some of them dying. I wouldn't want to be a nurse in that atmosphere. How many children have been killed of lack of food? Meanwhile, mom and dad, today, today, have tattoos, cigarettes, and booze. I can't, uh, man, I, 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 like I said, I watch the people's corner. You know, they come in there, you know, I got, well, I ain't got, I, but they got tattoos. I think you should put an identification on an ID. This person receives welfare. And when you go to a tattoo office, we got to see your ID. Oh, wait a minute. Your welfare, we, we can't give you it. How come people on welfare have got extra money to do things that primarily the working American doesn't, not able to do? Don't tell me. I know family members who are on welfare who have gone down to the office and gotten money. One of them got money for a car. They didn't have a job. You didn't realize that these sexual crimes are coming up in the churches and in the schools? You thought you were hidden. Teachers today are now being charged, being found. They've been molesting the children. The priests of the Catholic Church have been molesting the children. The Southern Baptist Church have been molesting the people. A, the, the, a pastor is, is having sex with a 16-year-old on the floor of his office. And 
last year and a couple years back, there, there were a bunch of stories of women who had been held captive in a house in the basement. And they had been sexually tortured. We don't know what happened to Jimmy Hoffa. And Amelia Earnhardt, we don't know what happened. And there's been telepo tel television programs, uh, this mystery of this crime. Well, and there's been, if you know about this crime and they give you the details, call this number and help us to find the person or even give us an idea who did it. There was a time I grew up that, that there would be pictures of kids on your milk carton that had been gone missing. All this mystery, all this 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 missing, all these mysteries. I said that. God knows. Judgment seat of Christ or the great white throne judgment will weigh it out. Well, you got a saved pastor or a lost pastor, you can't have a lost pastor. One day you will realize what his motive for that pulpit was. Evil or good. You may find out one day your pastor wasn't so great. I know I sat under pastors that had taken me close under their, their wings. And I've heard him say some despicable things about the people in the church. I had one pastor start telling me to some of the secrets. I, I don't want to hear that. Because he didn't get too happy with me after that. All the men in that confederacy, that there's people that leagued up. Leagued up. You mean like the United Nations, the League of Nations? All the men of that confederacy have brought thee even to the border. The men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee. Now, China hates America. The Mexicans hate America. The, the Canadians hate America. There, there's no country in this world that loves America. Oh yeah, all these people come to the, all these people come to America not because the greatness of America because they can get free food, free medical, free clothing, and they don't have to work for it. There are people that come into Florida, I'm not going to mention some islands off Florida. They come here and then they get Social Security disability. There is no disability. There are people that come across our borders and get all the... That's what they love. They don't love America for... You've just been deceived. We got freedom. We want to thank our soldiers for freedom. Go walk into a Catholic church and preach to the people that their religion is vain. And see how quick the cops come. Paul was at a, a statue that said, To the unknown God, the religion of the unknown God. And he's preaching there, and the cops didn't come. There are some places, even if it's legal, you street preach, the cops will come each and every time. You know, I know that. I've been told street preaching Daytona Beach. 911 gets a phone call every Saturday we were there. I have seen pictures of street preachers 2020 in the month of June. They're, they are preaching at these gay rallies, these gay marches. Oh, by the way, it's called Pride. Gay Pride. That's, just, that's two sins right there, two abominations. One of my I saw today. And they, and they were like in front of a 7-Eleven, and these cops that are full body, full body armor. And I'm not talking about just the little handguns they have. I'm talking about that they got the guns that are strapped. I don't know what you call them. 
and 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 the caption was by the, by the street preacher. There was no robbery at the Seven Eleven. That, that was the picture right here. He said, "This is our for preachers that are preaching at the gay rally." And there have been other pictures where tons of police officers and cars. These are here because we have been preaching to the gay people. You know, I've had Daytona police say, you know, we got better things to do. While they've sent four or five police officers and four or five police cars. Because I'm preaching the gospel. And we got the video, some of them. And, aren't, and you say, what does that have to do with the peace of the sea? Aren't the police officers called the peace officers? They have been told by me, my lawyer, and the documentation I have by the Supreme Court of the United States of America that what I am doing is legal and right. Why am I getting a hard time? Why are all the cops around my fellow street preachers for the gay rallies? In America, free, how come when you go, they go every year, and I used to want to go, but I'm not well enough, but they, when the Latter-day Saints meet at their temple once a year or twice a year, I know men going over there, and they go preach, to preach to the Mormons and hand out gospel to And the Mormons now have in free America a box on the street, that's the only place you can be, and to them that's legal because they own the state, Salt Lake City and all that. A religion owns it. All the stores are owned by Latter-day Saints. You ain't got much rights in free America. My daughter is going to be 20 years old. She says, Daddy, oh, I would love to have a little playhouse out in the backyard. I'd be like, you're too old. But, Dad, I'd love to have a playhouse. I said, Okay. I get all the stuff, and I go out there, which I can't. But if I were to build her a playhouse, oh, Daddy, this is so great. The city of Daytona Beach would say, you got to tear that down. And you owe us money. Fine. Why? It's my, it's my property. You, you didn't get documentation. You didn't get a permit. You didn't get a license from us. Free America? Yeah, right. You've been deceived. And prevailed against thee. So the ones that, that they think, and this is worldwide, you think the people that love you, they'll sell you out. I've had many Christians, oh, I'll be with you. Uh, I'll say, hey, I love your ministry and all that. Where are they today? They're gone. And a lot of them, you know, they are gone against us. That they eat thy bread, have laid a wound under thee. That's Judas. Now, I don't know at what point in time Judas came into the ministry of Jesus. It doesn't say. But he walked and lived with Jesus. And he was sent out by Jesus. He had the works of, of the healing and the works of the signs by Jesus. And they had dinner together the Last Supper. And Judas left that dinner and went out and sold. Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Paul had his people that sold him out. There is none understanding in him. You, you, know, you don't know why. Shall not in the day, in that day, in that day, in that day, in that day, say the Lord, be destroyed the wise men out of the end. Look, they got wise men. America has wise men. America's got people in colleges teaching, educators, scholars, and students that are smart. We, we got things with nuclear and electronic and all these great things, but they don't know God. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. They don't have the fear of the Lord. Yeah, they know something, but they don't know God, and God don't know them. Don't do you no good. 
They got wise men in Edom, but they are an enemy of God. They are an enemy of Israel. Just starting off wrong. You know, there have been wise men that died and they're in hell today. Some of the big men that you quote for, you may have their pictures in your classroom, or you may have their pictures in your textbooks and all that. They're burning in hell today. I don't care what they did. And there are great men that have done great things in the military. And they've done terrible things in the military. Where's the man that designed the gun? Where's he today? Where's the man that designed the guillotine? Where is he? I, I don't know if they're saved or lost. It did no good for the... There's Heimlich, uh, uh, Heimlich Rickover. Man, he is the... the, the, the Man of all mans of the United States nuclear submarine. That guy was proficient. That guy was educated. That guy knew what he was doing. He was wise. Did he know Jesus and did Jesus know him? I'm not saying, I'm not saying he did, I'm saying no. Albert Einstein, you ever see him? You know, he, he, he's got that picture like he stuck his finger in a light socket. What about all he knew? I mean, there's that E equals MC squared, whatever that is. He's wise. Where is he today? I don't know. What's that Stephen Hawkins, that man that was in the wheelchair? Greatest man. I, I, most likely for him, he's in hell. Because he, everything he had an opportunity, he would disclaim God. Where is he today? He was wise. And the mighty men, old team, and that would be your military, team in the city and Edom, you know, shall be dismayed. Your military is going to be dismayed at God one day. Right? Now you think of the mighty tank. I know a couple of men who who, who were in the tank military during World War II. I've heard stories of the tanks. Snow would stop tanks. They wouldn't be able to get through. You were out in the desert, and you were in one of those tanks. They didn't have air conditioning. Not the old ones. New ones probably do. To the end, the end, the end, important words in the Bible, that everyone of the Mount of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. There's coming a time that Esau will be destroyed. God will finish off whatever's left of Esau, Edom, when he returns, he'll be one of them goat nations.